Um, so yeah, when documenting the quality during digitization, um, we will talk about metadata. So what exactly are metadata? Metadata are simply data about the data. So you can use metadata to describe the content, the accessibility, the completeness of the data set. So in the metadata, you can add a lot of information. You can also document the errors that um, that your data set may uh, contain. And you can also doc document the validation process, the data cleaning and data correcting process. So in, a, in theory, in an ideal world, uh, metadata must be rich enough to allow data use or be used by a third party without them having to refer to the data source. So it's the metadata that will give the user context about your data. So what do you do when you have some taxonomic data? So first of all, what are taxonomic data? So we, we talked already about the different origins of data and we talked about taxonomic data, but uh, here are a few reminders about the taxonomic data. So it can be names, uh, they can be scientific names, vernacular names, ranks, hierarchy. Uh, some You can also have some status. Uh, this name is a synonym of this name. Uh, this name is valid. This name is not valid anymore. You can also have some references, such as the author, the date, and location of the description of the species. The identification, uh, who and when uh, was this uh, specimen or individual identified. Uh, and you can also have some quality terms uh, related to taxonomic data, such as the ID certainty, for example. So in the case of taxonomic data, scientific and or vernacular names are the entry point to retrieve and to, to find, the, to have access to the data. So the risk of propagating errors uh, during the whole data publishing process is really great uh, in the scientific or vernacular data. So uh, um, below are listed some possible errors and solutions. So the most common types of errors are incorrect identifications. So in this case, if you are not sure about the identification of a specimen or an individual, you can you 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 should uh, call for help from a taxonomist. So it can be one of your colleagues or uh, an expert in taxonomy, so someone who is a, a reference in a taxonomy. Uh, then we also uh, can find a lot of typos uh, in uh, data, in, uh, sorry, in taxonomic uh, data, so and especially in scientific names. So typos can be uh, cleaned uh, during data cleaning process that we will see uh, later in this training. And then we can also have some errors uh, when data are in the wrong format. So for example, you when you uh, you put the scientific names in the wrong column or uh, you you can also uh, fix that uh, using data cleaning process and the errors can affect scientific and vernacular names uh, from our taxonomic ranks so you have to be careful about the scientific name uh, table or column but you uh, also have to check uh, all the taxonomic ranks uh, in order to be sure that your data are correct at every taxonomical level. Um, some other common mistakes to avoid uh, regarding taxonomic data are uh, missing data. For example, when you have the subspecies that is mentioned but not the species, so it can just be uh, uh, an omission and uh, it can be fixed uh, easily. Um, you can also have some incorrect values, so such as typos or one columns or uh, even symbols. So if you have some um, uh, incertitudes about the data, um, you you should leave the the spreadsheet uh, um, cell blank uh, instead of leave, uh, leaving symbols uh, like uh, interrogation points or anything, because it can really uh, affect the quality of your data. Then you also can uh, encounter some non-atomic values, uh, for example, uh, subspecies because Taza in a single term. So in Darwin core, 
the standard that it that is used uh, within GLIF. Um, there's um, a field for the the, the subspecies rank and uh, another field for the subspecies uh, value. So you must be careful not to uh, merge these two fields in a single term. Um, one of the common uh, mistakes regarding taxonomic data can be uh, duplicates. So, uh, no, sorry, uh, uncertainty on the at least one name of the binomial nomenclature. So if you have some uh, doubts about the identification uh, of your individual, uh, if you have some doubts about the species, for example, um, the best thing is to, to leave the... To, um, to stop the identification at the genus uh, level, and then you, you can ask for help from an expert about the identification of the species. So it's, it's best to, to, to leave the, the identification at a higher level than to uh, share a, an incorrect identification. Then you can also have some duplicates, uh, so that can be synonyms or several valid names for the same species. So here again, you have to check and uh, use only one term, uh, only one name, sorry. And you can also uh, find some inconsistent data uh, after database is fusion or uh, when using several checklists. So uh, here again, you have to be sure that you only use one referential for uh, each of your data and that uh, everything is consistent and congruent. So after the uh, taxonomic data, we uh, can also deal with uh, spatial data. So a uh, definition of spatial data um, uh, is uh, on this slide. So you can see that spatial data uh, can be textual or georeferenced. So textual can be a name of a city or country, county or country. And dual reference are um, some numbers that are the latitude and longitude uh, of your of your data. Uh, so special data are one uh, of the key information to determine the fit fitness for use for biodiversity primary data. So they can be used for species di distribution modeling, selection of areas to protect, resources and environment management. So it's really important to, to have uh, special data. So you can do your best to, um, to fill in the, the, the special information that you have about your data, even if you don't have a GPS or if, even if you don't have uh, the uh, geographic coordinates for your data. Um, at least you can uh, always put the, the name of the, the place where the data were recorded or observed or uh, collected. And uh, if you can go back to these places uh, with a, a software or, the, or a device to, um, to record the, the coordinates, so you, you can do this uh, at a later time. So when we talk about special data, we are talking about, uh, most of the time, latitude and longitude, uh, or sometimes some areas or point and radius or a bounding box, which is a rectangle calculated from the coordinates of two points, or sometimes polylines or even grid references. So in the next slide, I will show you what a, a grid reference is. So here you can see some data based on a grid. So you can see that, that a, uh, sometimes the data are not some points, but you, the, these are some uh, uh, cells on a, on a grid. So it's, uh, it's not as precise uh, as uh, some points with the uh, uh, real coordinates, but it can be helpful when you have some uh, atlas or uh, data that are collected uh, on a large scale. So for a few more definitions about special data, uh, here we have the, the definition of coordinates. So uh, a coordinate uh, is a code uh, documenting a position on Earth uh, expressed with a spatial reference system. And most of the time, coordinates are uh, latitude and longitude. So uh, it's always the, the two uh, coordinates uh, together. You, if you have only, only a, la a latitude or only a longitude, it will not work. You, you need to have a latitude and longitude to, to be able to, 
to uh, reference uh, the position of your data on Earth. Then georeferencing is the process of assigning a geographical reference to a given record. So that's when we you do uh, you, you can do that uh, at the time of the record. So when you are on the field and you you have a GPS or you have checked the georeference uh, of the place you are in, or you can do that at a later time where using a, a GIS uh, software or uh, a remote uh, um, system or anything else. And uh, datum is a geodetic system and it's uh, really useful to know the datum that you are working with because uh, it, uh, it's really uh, yeah, uh, useful to, to give the datum uh, as well as the coordinates. So um, as it, it was the case for the taxonomic data, there's also some common mistakes to avoid uh, when we are dealing with uh, special data such as coordinates inversion, uh, null values, unknown datum, inadapted SRS, and conversion issues. So on the right of this slide, you can see, uh, and this is an old map that was used by the, the GBIF a few years ago. So the, the maps on GBIF uh, are not the same right now, but uh, this is only to show you that um, before the the JBIF implemented some uh, automatic uh, correction of uh, Joe references. You can you can see what were the, the problems before. So here you can see that on the United Sta United States, sorry, you you have a, a lot of data, but you you can see a mirror effect uh, on the on China on the the right of the map. So uh, this is due to an uh, coordinate uh, inversion. And you can also spot other mistakes in, uh, on this map. So, for example, you have a line in the center of the map, a vertical line, that is um, the Greenwich Meridian. And uh, it's due to the fact that uh, some people, uh, when they didn't know the coordinates of the data, they just put a zero in uh, longitude uh, set. And you can also spot the same uh, same mistake for the equator line, which is the, the zero for the latitude. And uh, you can also see um, a small mirror effect uh, of the United States uh, data um, on the west of Chile in the South Pacific, which is due to a uh, coordinate inversion, but uh, with the um, latitude this time. So this, uh, this map is a great uh, example to show, show you what can be wrong uh, with the geographical data. So you have to be sure that your data are well georeferenced and then you have to check that there's no, uh, uh, no errors uh, of this kind. So now we are talking about the collection data. Uh, so at first, some definitions. So when we talk about collection data, we... Um, we talk about the collector names, uh, the collection date, uh, and some additional information such as habitat or soil or meteorologic, meteorological uh, condition. So um, the relevance of this uh, data about collection uh, depends on the data set type. So if, if you have a static collection uh, such as a museum, for example, a museum collection, you will need uh, the collector name and uh, his uh, ID, um, the date of collection, maybe the habitat or the capture technique. When you have a when you have a static collection, uh, such as a, a museum collection, you will need the collector name and ID, uh, the date of collection, the habitat, and maybe the capture technique if you have it. So sometimes you can extract this information from the labels. Uh, sometimes you have access to the notes or the field, bo uh, field books that were used at the time of the collect. Uh, sometimes it's uh, recent um, specimens, so you, you can talk to your colleagues and uh, ask them uh, what, were the, what, what was the context of the collection. But sometimes you don't have uh, this information, so you might be... Uh, uh, you might have to uh, to, retrie to retrieve this information using uh, other um, uh, materials. 
then uh, when you uh, work with uh, observations, uh, you can need some uh, in additional information about collection, such as um, observation length or the area or the time of day, the activity, the sex of the observed spe specimen, what, what they were doing. So you can add a lot of information uh, about this kind of uh, data. And then you can also have some uh, data that are more uh, sampling event data. So here we, you will need to the document the sampling methods, the grid size, the frequency, the collection of reference specimen, uh, and anything else that could be related to the, the context of the sampling event. So uh, when we are dealing with collection data, uh, we can have some uh, some factors uh, that will have an impact about the data your data quality. So um, we will talk about exactitude about the names of the collect collectors or the date. So you you have to be sure that the collector's name is uh, with the, the good uh, is well written and that the date is correct too. So you can uh, do some background checks. So for example, if you have some specimens that were collected by uh, a naturalist uh, from the uh, 19th uh, century, and that the date of collect is uh, uh, 2013, uh, you will see that some something's wrong and you have to check what is the correct date. Um, the consistency of the data, so uh, you... You, you should use a control vocabulary in, in order to standardize your data. Um, the completeness of your data is also really important. So uh, some terms are very rarely completed. Uh, for example, f the flowering periods for uh, plants or trees, uh, associated species in the case of uh, parasites or uh, symbiotic organisms. So it can be really useful for you, for your colleagues, for um, uh, later users of your data to know uh, which uh, species were uh, associated with your specimen or with the, the individuals that you observed. Uh, so if you have this information, so you, you should add them even if you think it's not interesting. It can be interesting to someone one day. And uh, to finish this presentation, we will talk about descriptive data. So uh, descript descriptive data are uh, of variable quality. So for example, historical data are impossible to check. So if uh, a specimen was collected 300, 300 years ago, it's nearly impossible to check uh, the context of, of its collect. So unless you have some really precise uh, logbooks or uh, uh, any kind of literature that can help you, uh, that is, uh, that that gives you details about the context of this uh, collect, you have no idea of what the collector saw, or, so you cannot uh, make up uh, the the missing details. Uh, sometimes data description is too expensive on time and or money, so people don't do that because it's. Uh, it's, uh, it takes too much time and it's too yeah, too expensive. Uh, sometimes some uh, some data are subject uh, are subjectivity uh, is to be taken into account. Uh, for example, for color or abundance estimation. Um, often, uh, most of the time, data uh, relative to the whole taxonomic rank uh, and not uh, the specimen in particular. So the descriptive data uh, are often made about the whole taxonomic rank and not the a given specimen. So you have to be sure that uh, this also uh, is right for your specimen. Uh, the completeness of your data is also to be checked. So it's generally impossible to achieve uh, completeness on a given specimen um, because uh, you, you, you just cannot have all uh, the information, but sometimes you can uh, fill in the blanks with the, 
some uh, information that were collected about another specimen of the same species, for example, or a, spe a specimen that was collected at the same time at, at the same place. So if you forgot to, to note uh, for one specimen the, the weather information, for example, and, and that the weather information were consistent for the, the whole uh, day you were on the field, you can... Uh, uh, check uh, with another specimen uh, that you collected at the same time and uh, just copy the weather information. But you have to be sure that it is correct. Um, and sometimes you have to check that the traits uh, are consistent between them. So in the database, if you have some uh, uh, description of a flower, flower color, for example, and uh, you can see here that we have an example just at the end of the slide, uh, of two uh, two shades that are really similar, uh, so carmine and crimson, describing the same flower color. So uh, if you notice this kind of error, you have to be sure that it's corrected by uh, just merging these two uh, these two uh, traits and um, just keeping one of one of the two. So thank you for your attention, and uh, this is the end of this video. <laughs>